Hi friends, we are back again as promised with a detailed review of D850. Since this camera comes with a lot of brand new features in a DSLR, we thought we will take a feature every episode and explain it. This episode, we thought we'll talk about focus stacking. For those who don't know what focus stacking is, it's a technique which the macro photographer, the product photographer, especially the jewelry photographers, and to a certain extent, the landscape photographers used to use to get maximum edge to edge sharpness in their uh, image. Traditionally, they used to achieve edge to edge sharpness using few other techniques. Some photographers used to use uh, a technical camera, which is not really in fashion anymore. The other popular technique was to use a small aperture uh, to, and keep everything in depth so that you get edge to edge sharpness. But the disadvantage is that then you will lose sharpness in absolute terms. The other technique where people used to use, I mean, we used to use something called a focus rail. We would mount the camera on this and we would shift the camera and keep taking pictures and those pic images are further uh, in turn um, taken for focus stacking in Adobe Photoshop. What we're going to do is we found this uh, in the studio to kind of demonstrate uh, the focus stacking uh, function. So let me frame it properly. Okay, now that you have composed your shot, so go into the menu, select the camera icon, which is the photo shooting menu. Go into it and you select the sub menu called the focused shift shooting. Shift right, the first option is number of shots. It basically asks you to decide or select or choose the number of shots through which shots that you want to take from beginning till the end. In this case, I have selected 25 shots. Next option that it gives you is focus step width. It basically is asking you to decide the distance between each shot. Uh, the first shot is here and the next shot, the distance between those two shots you need to dial in. It, it again is from one to 10, one being the smallest and 10 being the widest. I have selected three. Uh, the next option is interval until next shot. It basically means the time delay between each shot. I would encourage everyone to give 7 to 10 seconds because the camera during that time the camera stabilizes itself. Here since we are shooting in control conditions I've kept it as 5 seconds. Uh, the next option is exposure smoothing. If your camera is set on aperture priority or shutter priority mode this particular feature allow, will allow you to smoothen the exposure between each shot. Now we are under control conditions so uh, you don't need to really do an exposure smoothing so that is disabled the second option is called silent photography it basically allows you to lock up the mirror during the the entire sequence of uh, you know shutter release there is one disadvantage with that one during silent photography it will not trigger a flash if you're using a flash so in control conditions in a studio using with working with studio flashes you should disable it uh, so silent photography is disabled what you have to remember is to shoot this with mirror up mode okay mirror up mode with a shutter release delay function to start the sequence you need to you cannot start from the trigger you go to right on top of that menu start and switch right and it'll prepare it'll wait for a second mirror up three seconds first fire Okay, now five seconds delay, mirror up, three seconds, fire. Okay, now five seconds delay, mirror up, three seconds delay, flash. Okay, one disadvantage with this function is that it doesn't allow you to shoot tethered into the computer. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, a firmware upgrade uh, which which happens very frequently in these days will enable this camera to kind of uh, let the photographer shoot tethered into the camera when he is on this focus stacking mode and that's a 25th shot so onto the computer now uh, here we are capture one pro which is our favorite software for processing 
Before we actually start the process on the computer, let me make a confession. We took 25 shots at F4. We later realized that uh, that probably is not the ideal way. It was not really giving me the depth that was required from top to the bottom. So we went back, shot again. Obviously, we did not record it. We're going to tell you what we did. We changed the aperture value to 8, the focus depth to 5, and we managed to get the sequence that is required in just five shots. So uh, let me show it to you in uh, close. This is the first shot at f8. You can see the focus tapering off from this point onwards. So the next shot, you can see the details. In the fourth shot, you see a little bit of this area not in focus. So we took one more shot to get that also in focus. So selected everything and I'm going to process them. Now that I have processed all the images, the step two is stacking all these images in uh, Adobe Photoshop. So in scripts, load the files into a stack. So I've selected all and open them. They are right here. Okay. I need to select all the layers together. Go to the edit menu, auto blend the layers. And stack images, seamless tones, content aware, fill transparent areas, all that is activated. Okay. Okay, now let me go to the full screen. You have your final finished image in front of you with maximum edge to edge sharpness. Uh, it probably is the first time that, like I said, mentioned earlier, uh, this particular feature is now available on a pro grade camera. And I'm certain that all that macro photographers, micro photographers, um, your jewelry photographer, packaging photographer, product photographer, and the landscape photographer is going to immensely benefit from this particular feature. Hope you like it. And if you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, share. And if you have any doubts, use the comments column to interact with us. We'll try and answer your questions if you have any, the best possible way that we can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.